الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوين الأربعين نوين الاعتكاف نوين الخلوة نوين العزلة نوين الرياضة نوين السلوك نوين الصيام الله تعالى عظيم في هذا المجد ما الذي أولياء الله عينون بعون الله وكونوا عونا لنا بالله عصمه الفضل الله ماذا سيد استعمال سيد شيخ الله الفائز داقستاني سيد استعمال سيد شيخ محمد ناظم عادل الحقاني سيد الشيخ محمد عادل رباني ماذا دي أسيادنا We live in the world of asbab and wasail means it's not everybody as they say has uh, the same abilities or same status or same no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even amongst the prophets messengers that amongst even our messengers we have made darajat, we have made levels. And Ninabluakum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this whole creation, this whole life is ibtila min Allah. Ayyukum ahsanu amala. We come into this world. And we have Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We start the, the eye of our hearts. Our hearts come pure. Al fitra. Illa man ata Allah bi qalbin salim. We come into this dunya bi qalbin salim. We come into this world with a, a pure heart. Look at babies. That's why everyone is attracted to babies. Baby cries, everybody is like baby. Because of that purity and that connection to their Lord. They are fully existing, fully relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Babies. And so people, even if they don't rationalize this, but they sense that there's something about children. And then as we grow, then that we start to soak like a sponge from our environment, from the people around us, all kinds of manners, all kinds of wrong understandings, all kinds of bad energies as they like to say now. And then the, the, the heart starts to veil, starts to be veiled. So then Prophet Sallallahu said, when you're responsible, then your, your duty, Islam, is to polish your heart. To bring it back to its original state of fitrah, where it's only connected and reliant on Allah. Full belief and certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That cannot happen if our hearts are full of attachments to this material world, attachments to uh, bad habits, cannot be. First, you go to the mashayikh, they teach you, first thing, you must, you must leave bad manners, you must leave bad actions. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, وَسْتَعِبِ uh, اللَّهِ uh, that leave haram you will be considered from the greatest of ubad of abid it's not by if you if you can't leave haram Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of your exercise or of your fasting, or of your... This is all for us. This is all for the polishing of the heart. You apply the Islam, the outer discipline, so that daily you force your nafs to leave everything and stand in between Allah's hands. Ramadan comes, you force your nafs. It's applying discipline on our nafs, 
Not free range chicken as they sell now, although free range chicken is expensive. No, nowadays, <laughs> free range eggs. Well, I went today to a place, $15 for 30 eggs. I can have 50 cents an egg. Why? He said free range. <laughs> they eat what they like. It's okay, we have to this is learn this from our Sheikh too. We like to uh, bring some humor so because this dunya is heavy and making people happy is from Iman. It's a sign of Iman. To lighten the hearts. But that's that's our condition. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout Throughout our time, there's all these opportunities. Sidi, please. <coughs> I would feel better also. So. <laughs> we have these seasons. Extra special points you get. Say. Normal, normal uh, points, and then Ramadan comes, and you have oh. Now every action is multiplied, the reward. And now we are coming upon a very special time. Fajr, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is in Surah Al-Fajr. He swears by the ten nights. And these are the nights of Dhul Hijjah coming up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant those who haven't been to Hajj, inshallah, to go and make Hajj, and those who have been acceptance, inshallah. But even for those who are not going, these 10 days coming are very special. So for, for us to, it's extra polish. Your, your hearts, if you make adhkar, awrad, salawat, dua, what have you, it, is, it has much more impact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those 10 days gives. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Today we live in, in a world where they try to convince us that Islam is just form. Islam is just to do the outer without the inner. But Islam is one aspect of religion, not the entirety. And we have Iman, and this is per only to do with the heart. Iman has nothing to do with the jawarih, with our outer actions. Iman is to, to do with the state of our hearts. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam indicated this in so many ahadiths in Holy Quran, as we mentioned the ayah, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except those who come with a pure heart have are granted paradise and acceptance and also in the heart is empty if it is clean, it is clean or as the Prophet said in the meaning of the Hadith if it is clean, it is clean, it is clean, it is clean and if it is clean, it is clean, it is clean and it is clean and it is clean Sallallahu said in your in your body there is a part if it is okay then the whole body is okay if it's not okay the whole body is not okay it's corrupted and that is the heart and this has been alluded to by imam ghazali in his ihya in his third uh, Heart, he starts with describing what that heart is and the importance of cleaning the heart. 
and the importance of busying oneself with cleaning the heart. And he talks about Ahl al-Tasawwuf, about the Sufis, that they busied themselves with knowledge of Fardain. You must know how to pray, how to fast. If you are a merchant, you must know how to buy and sell. You must know how to pay zakat, ahkam, you must know. This is fardain, this is obligatory knowledge on, on every Muslim. But beyond that, the, a lot of the mashayikh did not require their student to delve into knowledge for the sake of knowledge, yani go deep. They, the tasawwuf, the, they're known for, beyond that, to focus on tazkiyah. That's why a lot of the turuq, they give you lots of awrad to do. One juz of Qur'an a day, uh, 1500 salawat, uh, a dhikr for example in our way, to start with dhikrullah, la ilaha illallah, so many, salah ala nabi, so many. So if you are working and you have a family, you have, most of your days are going to be uh, spent in awrad and athkar. So this because they understood that more important than acquiring knowledge and ilm huh, for the sake of more than what is necessary for your well-being internally, that more important is to clean the heart. And not that, because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did indicate that العلم فريضة على كل مسلم شيء. It is most obligatory. The علم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is talking is the علم that brings you nearer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Not علم in its entirety. There is علم that is not recommended. The علم that takes you away from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. That makes you veil from Allah. Nowadays they busy themselves with all kinds of knowledge. They study, you have some departments in universities is studying Mulana used to make fun whether the belly of the ant is in the front or in the back. Huh? But uh, does the belly have, <laughs> does the ant have a belly? That's a question. <laughs> I don't know. Does it? <laughs> well, that, that, is, that knowledge you, you are here for 60, 70 years, you spend your entire life studying something like this. Well, that's bad, that's not good knowledge. That's bad knowledge. But the ilm that brings you near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ilm that is recommended. The ilm, for example, as we said, fardain, because you're obligated to obey Allah, so you have to know how, how to obey Him. Then, then you must learn that knowledge. But beyond that, the Ahl al-Tasawwuf, they believe that the, that the real ilm comes with, a, once your heart is pure, that that ilm, وَاتَّقُوا وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهِ That have taqwa and Allah teach you. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives knowledge to his pure servants and sincere servants in their hearts that Sayyidina Umar was, for example, was known to be muhaddath. Muhaddath means he, he gets his information from a different source, not from when, when, he, when he is in need of uh, something, it is thrown in his heart or it's told to him what to say, what, what, to, what is the re reality of that knowledge. And many like this, once, once a, a abd, and Nabi also indicated, He said, be aware of the insight of the believer. Uh, because he is looking with what? With the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's not looking. He's looking from the outside. He's like everyone's looking. But when he's looking, what, is, what he's receiving through that look is through the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why the importance of coming together to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and your coming to remember Him 
is a sign that he has remembered you. That, that is the reality. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, iqbaluka alayh is a sign that huwa muqbil alayk. That, that if you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is itself, if you're concerned with pleasing Allah, if you're trying to make remembrance of Allah, is itself a indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqbal alayk. That he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to remember him. Therefore, he is giving you the insight, the ability, the mind, the uh, maybe knowing where to go to make the Allah. Um, all this, your health, to go to make the Allah. You may want to go make the uh, with uh, Jama'ah, but you can't because you don't have health, for example. Like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, it's a, it's a great sign when you are able to make daily wird. If you can find the time and the himma and the energy to sit and say Allah, Allah, or la ilaha illallah, that itself is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala muqbilun alayk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you as his servant to remember him. Therefore, he is granting you the ability and the himma and the time and the, the know-how to sit and remember him. All these are good signs. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us, especially in these coming 10 days, especially on the day of Arafah also, where we have opportunity to wipe clean our slate of sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Grant those who are going to Hajj to have Hajj Mabrur and Sa'i Mashkur, inshallah. And, and there's a good book for those who are going to Hajj. Maybe you guys can read, can bring it. It's Asrar al Hajj by Imam Ghazali also. He talked about the, some, some of the fine uh, etiquette and, and the, the meaning of some of the Mashair when you visit. So, it's, uh, it's good to read it on the way or beforehand. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all him uh, and, and this is end, end of times. I know we say it often, but it's true. You just have to look around you in the world and you know that dhahar al-fasad fil Corruption is filling the earth. Mercy is, look what all the atrocities happening in Gaza and Palestine. And you find that this world is mercy, there's no mercy in people's hearts. Uh, watching. You find all these signs happening now. The only thing is the permission for Malham al Kubra. When the permission comes for the big war, the great war, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He gives the permission, khalas. It's the great war, and then, inshallah, Mahdi alayhi salam, and then Isa alayhi salam. Allahumma afina wa hafadna, inshallah. And the only safety we have is qalb salim. At that time, you want to have, be with people with true hearts, pure hearts, sincere ones. You want to be from them as well, inshallah. Wa minallahi tawfiq bi hurmati al-fatiha.